This is a presentation of the Ontario Injury Prevention Resource Centre, supporting practitioners to reduce injury in Ontario. The OIPRC is operated by Parachute, preventing injuries and saving lives. Welcome to Fundamentals for Injury Prevention Practitioners. These five modules will provide you with a basic understanding of the injury prevention field. This is Module 1, Introduction to Injury Prevention. What is an injury? According to the World Health Organization, an injury is the physical damage that results when a human body is suddenly or briefly subjected to intolerable levels of energy. It can be a bodily lesion resulting from acute exposure to energy in amounts that exceed the threshold of physiological tolerance, or it can be an impairment of function resulting from a lack of one or more elements, as in drowning, strangulation, or freezing. The time between exposure to the energy and the appearance of an injury is short. Injuries result from the transfer of one of five types of energy to the body's tissues. One type of energy is mechanical or kinetic energy, as in the case of falls, motor vehicle crashes, and assaults. Another form of energy is thermal energy, as in burns, and scalds. A third form of energy that can cause injury is electrical energy, an electrocution from wiring and lightning strikes. A fourth kind of energy is chemical energy, as in corrosion and poisoning. And a fifth kind of energy that can cause injury is radiation, either electromagnetic, as in the case of sunlight, or ionizing, as in radioactive decay. Injuries can also occur from the disruption of the body's internal energy regulation through the absence of one of two vital elements. heat, absent in hypothermia from exposure and cold water immersion, and oxygen, absent in drowning, suffocation, strangulation, and choking. We can also talk about injuries in terms of their intent. Unintentional injuries are what we have traditionally labeled accidents. Intentional injuries are those that are meant to cause harm, either self-inflicted or other-inflicted. Injuries aren't accidents. Even unintentional injuries aren't accidents, which the dictionary defines as unavoidable acts of fate. The vast majority of injury-causing events are predictable and thus preventable. Defining the issue. Injuries are the leading cause of death for Canadians between the ages of 1 and 44. The total economic burden of injury in Canada is estimated to be $26.8 billion. What is injury prevention? Injury prevention encompasses ongoing strategies 
policies or programs designed to eliminate or reduce the occurrence and severity of injuries. We can speak of three levels of prevention. Primary prevention, prevention of the injury causing event, such as fencing around swimming pools. Secondary prevention, minimizing the bodily harm in an injury causing event, such as wearing protective equipment while participating in sports. And tertiary prevention, minimizing further consequences of injury, as in administering first aid. How can injuries be prevented? By focusing on the five core health promotion strategies. One, build healthy public policy. Two, create supportive environments. Three, strengthen community actions. Four, develop personal skills. And five, reorient health services. Models and theories for injury prevention include Haddon's Matrix and the three E's of injury prevention. We'll look at each of these in turn. Haddon's Matrix is named after Dr. William Haddon, considered to be the father of modern injury prevention. It uses an epidemiological approach to assessing injury risk. Using a modified version of the classic epidemiological triangle of infectious disease, Hatton suggested that injuries be considered from a time series perspective. The epidemiological triangle encompasses host, or the infected person, agent, or the disease-causing organism, and environment, both physical and social. A time series perspective includes pre-event, events leading up to the injury, event, the moment the injury occurs, and post-event, or injury outcomes. Haddon combined these to produce Haddon's matrix. In Haddon's matrix, the host, agent, and environment are all considered pre-event, event, and post-event. For example, when looking at factors involved in a motor vehicle crash, one can look at the driver or host, car or agent, and the physical and social environment. For each of these elements, one can look at factors involved pre-event, driving prior to the collision, the event, the collision itself, and post-event, the response. Using the matrix, we can now characterize various different risk factors that may be involved in a motor vehicle crash. The value of Haddon's matrix is that it encourages brainstorming of a wide range of factors that might increase or decrease the likelihood of an injury. It takes the focus off of the individual and generates a comprehensive list of risk factors. Haddon's countermeasures prevent the transfer of energy to the body, which ultimately causes the injury.
Countermeasures include preventing the creation of a hazard, as in a baby walker ban, reducing the amount of the hazard, as in limiting package size for medication, preventing the release of a hazard that already exists, as an example of grab bars, modifying the rate or spatial distribution of the hazard, as in speed limits, separating in time or space the hazard from that which is to be protected, as in bicycle paths, separating the hazard from that which is to be protected by a material barrier, as in bicycle helmets. Modify the relevant qualities of the hazard, as in energy-absorbing playground surfacing. Make what is to be protected more resistant to damage from the hazard, as in swimming lessons. Begin to counter the damage already done by the hazard, as in first aid. And stabilize, repair, and rehabilitate the object of damage, as in emergency medical services. The three E's of injury prevention focus on education, enforcement, and engineering. Examples of each of these for education, Safe Kids Week, first aid training, enforcement, seatbelt laws and alcohol policies, and for engineering, child-resistant caps and bike paths. In all these cases, we can talk about active versus passive strategies. Active strategies rely on individuals taking some level of action, for example, buying and wearing a helmet. Passive strategies require no action from the individual, as in airbags in cars. Injury prevention strategies can fit anywhere along this continuum. This completes Module 1 of Fundamentals for Injury Prevention Practitioners. Continue your training with Module 2, Common Types of Injuries and Their Risk Factors.